Hey, Mr. Binks, you know how we love using our Fotizo Vet Care. You're no stranger to it, but nor am I, nor's Gremlin. And Prudence definitely has had a lot of this amazing red light therapy device. So that's why I've gone down to the Mind, Body and Spirit show to meet up with Ruth Milner, who's going to tell us a whole lot more. I'm Anna Webb. Welcome to A Dog's Life. Hey, Ruth. It's so much fun. We're sitting in a teepee at the Mind, Body and Spirit show. (laughs) Fabulous. Yeah, it's a bit different from maybe some other podcasts. <laughs> I know, this is the first recording ever in a TP, but I'm loving it. Um, it's such a great show, this. There's so much variety, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. And, and I love the Grand Hall at Olympia. And you're here, obviously, as an exhibitor with the Fotizo Vet Care. Yes, and, and all the other Fotizo models as well, because this um, device isn't just for our animals, it's for humans as well. I know, I know, but from my perspective and my own personal journey with you and Fotizo, it has really all been about the vet care. And so for me, I have such a sort of massive piece of my heart attached to this product. I mean, it is simply a product I can't live without. Um, and everyone's probably listening, thinking, what is the product? But, you know, it's all about red light therapy, isn't it? That's right. Yes. Which has gone like 0 to 60 in a very, very short period of time. Yes, it has. Uh, we've been very fortunate with the Fotizo Vet Care, really. We're celebrating our 10th year of selling this device. And we couldn't sell the human ones, but we could sell the animal one. Um, so yes, in 2013 we started selling um, selling the Fertiza Vet Care and it's probably, I would say, one of the, the pioneering devices of, of this modality to hit the market and it's still going strong. Even now we're getting more and more of this modality coming out onto the market for animal yeah, use. and it's like anything, isn't it? Um, I suppose, in a way, cars or um, anything, uh, candles, I'm seeing candles around here, or anything. There's a variety in the um, specification, in the efficacy of products, you know. Um, and when you say this modality, I mean, it's kind of, I said, red light therapy which is almost like the nickname for this, which is an accessible way of describing it to people because people get what it is. It is red, it is light, and it is therapy. But that's, I think as I say, really more the nickname because there's a lot more that doesn't describe, that's what I'm trying to say, what red light therapy does, does it? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's it should be simple really um, but unfortunately we've faced a um, many years of lots of different names to describe what is essentially the same thing and the modern term in the layman's terms is red light therapy but um, we now have the scientific term of photobiomodulation which has been adopted uh, by the scientists to describe this modality, whether it's being delivered from a professional or complicated and more expensive piece of equipment, or whether it's um, a home use device that's been simplified. Yeah, and that's basically, but photobiomodulation is kind of the word that describes the effects that red light therapy yeah. actually has yeah. and and the biomodulation bit I find particularly interesting because explain what that is. Yeah so photo is, is it comes from photon, it's light, yes. it's bio, bi- biology and modulation so th- there's very often the term stimulation but um, it doesn't just the, the effect of the light doesn't just stimulate, it, it basically modulates 
cellular processes of the body um, and regulates everything, how the body is supposed to actually function. Um, so it's not an overstimulation of anything, particularly. And we are still getting more um, research, results and research coming through now. Um, we've, we're still at the tip of the iceberg, in all honesty, scientifically and understanding of how light interacts with the body and how, you know, it, it, we're just connected to light. Um, but essentially, it, it fires up the body's own self-healing mechanisms. It just facilitates our natural healing. And that is the same whether you're two-legged or four-legged. No, of course, of course. No, I know. And everyone listening, you know, they're all dog owners and probably cat owners and more as well. So, you know, it is true that, you know, I will say this, the vet care is brilliant to use on humans too. It is, it is. Although we, you know, we're, we're fortunate with the brand that we're bringing here to the Mind, Body, Spirit, that we're, we're lucky enough that we can say we've got three of our devices that have medical certification. Absolutely. Um, I mean, that's the only we, way, isn't yeah. it, with humans? You've got to have your medical yeah. CE. To, to make a clinical claim, yes, yeah. that's, that's correct. Which, which we've got. Yes, absolutely. And the vet care model is, is manufactured to the same standard and under the same regulations. Um, so people that, that may be interested in looking at investing in one of these machines can be rest assured that it's you know it, it, it does what it says on the tin um, which is what I know you know regulating cellular energy yeah. helping achieve balance in the body but for specific conditions you know I mean I know because I've been blessed actually to be introduced to the vet care by an amazing physiotherapist so I'm desperately in awe of really and all fond of Sherry Scott who with Mary Bromley founded animal physiotherapy way back so and she happened to live in the neighboring village to where I lived when people listening know I moved to the Shire for a couple of years and um, really Sherry was like my kind of surrogate mum really and um, the wonderful thing was we were so close to each other that whenever she had students doing her TCAP course that wanted to build dogs into their study as well as the core of it which was horses <laughs> it would be me Molly my first bull terrier and Mr Binks we'd jump in the car and whiz over and Moles and Mr Binks would get lots of free um, physiotherapy sessions and both of them were individual cases in their own right so they um, they were really interesting different very different types of dogs and um, yeah it was brilliant so Sherry and I built a great relationship and it was Sherry that introduced me to the mm. vet care in 2014 and to be honest Ruth every day since then so getting on for 10 years crikey I use it every day yeah. you know yeah so and I use so what do I use it for well I've used it to restore Mr Binks who was in a bit of a state when I got him. Um, Sherry described him as being oven ready because he didn't really have much hair. So we restored his skin, which had issues, made him hairy. And also because Binks has only got one hip, you know, managing his musculoskeletal system was a, a big issue. And Sherry helped me a lot with that. So I didn't know he had one hip when I agreed to, you know, to rehome him, you see. Yeah. So it was all a bit of a shock. So, um, you know, um, so for musculoskeletal issues, you know, I'd say the vet care is absolutely amazing at reducing inflammation, really, isn't it? That's the key to this as well. Yeah. In, in joints, in muscles, in yeah. ligaments, and that can really keep us springing your old dog step. Yeah, certainly in terms of tackling a, a, a diagnosed condition or you know a painful condition or when, when things have gone wrong 
Um, yeah, the body's first response is, in, is an inflammatory response and that's where red light therapy or photobiomodulation can really assist the body's um, mechanisms to and get fired up with applying a, a, an appropriate level of dose of red, specifically red and near infrared light um, to, to um, work in the mitochondria to produce more cellular energy. So if you think in terms of, oh right, so you, you produce more energy in the body, so that starts a cascade of all these amazing biological effects that are just naturally there, but you're just, it's like putting a set of jump leads on the body, if you like. Yeah, to, yeah, to yeah. Really, really get that, that, you know, the process going. And especially important when we've got animals that might be struggling with maybe healing, you know, as they get older or there's, they've got conditions where it might make the, the repair system a little bit sluggish. Well, their immune system is a bit compromised, you, exactly. know, um, you know, for lots of reasons. Their diet may not have been very strong through their life, you know, to again nourish at a cellular level. Because that's, that's what we're all, that's what we all have to try and do, you know. We need to keep our body burdened down and, um, and, and nourish. And this, again, is where yeah. the vet care comes in because it's, it's nourishing from, from the inside out. It's how I like to just, what do you think about this? Absolutely, yeah, it's from the, from the inside out. Um, red light pen, well, it, 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 nobody has been able to determine exactly how deep it penetrates. Mm. If, it, if it's applied over acute points, it can go deep into the meridian system. And um, certainly what is observed with our animals, that even from people that wouldn't necessarily observe some of those normal reactions from, from any other therapies, is that it has a profound calming effect mm. as well. So it's, it's not just physiological, it's... Neurological. Ne well, it, yeah, psychological, emotional. But it helps with nerve damage, doesn't oh, it? Oh, yes, you know, absolutely. I mean, this is the thing, yes, you yes. know, it's such yeah. a versatile product. Yeah, yeah. It really is. I mean, I've used the vet care this morning already. I had an early start. And Gremlin, my cat's a bit poorly, but of course he's benefited from the vet care since he's been four, because he's now nearly 13. Um, and he'd been out on the tiles. I don't know what he'd been doing last night. He certainly wasn't home by two in the morning. Anyway, six o'clock in the morning he was there, but he was a bit wired. So, because, you know, because I was coming down here, I thought, right, Grem, you know, right, here we go. So we did the key points. And then Prudence got up, and that's my miniature bull terrier, and I don't know, she's nearly eight, and she managed to crick her neck or something, sleeping at an awkward angle, because, you know, she's just muscle. So we had to do, so this just highlights how, what a useful product it is. It's just so versatile. I know. It, it, it's incredible. I mean, there's, there's some um, research coming through that suggests that before having any any surgery, before elective surgery, you can pre-treat an area to help fire up the, the cell, cells in that area prior to the trauma happening. And that's what surgery is, it's trauma. Um, and the buzzword with phys in physiotherapy, animal physios, is, is prehab, getting the body ready for that surgery. And that's where this red light therapy can really play an important part into integrating into that prehab program as well as rehab after the trauma has occurred. Oh uh, yeah, no, rehab, oh my God, I mean, you know, I've, <laughs> I think I've used the vet care probably for the most different things than a lot of people actually, because 
again, everyone listening knows about Prudence and she had this huge pythorax emergency surgery. So I didn't have the luxury of any prehab, but um, it wasn't a planned operation as such. So that's, you know, and that often those operations are the most traumatic actually yeah. in yeah. event of a accident, you yeah. know. So, um, but she, yes, she had an eight, well, she still has an eight inch scar around her whole chest because she had the pleasure of being cut in half at the Queen Mother Hospital. Um, and, you know, they had to do what they had to do. Um, and yes, vet care, you know, was invaluable, invaluable, yeah. invaluable. Because it was during the, it was at the start of the second lockdown. So I was unable to see her or anything or take my vet care through those doors. I did try extremely hard. Um, but unfortunately, the pandemic rules were the pandemic rules, you know, and they wouldn't let a foreign object enter the premises. Probably quite right, but... Um, yeah, but having said that, I mean, once you got her home... And yeah, but you know what I mean, it's like immediately after surgery, I would have loved to have done it. That is the best way, mm. but it's never too late to start no, no. using this, mm. um, this, this light, type of light therapy. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, the sooner the better after after a surgery has been performed. But nevertheless, you know, it, yes, I know, it absolutely. can't always happen like that. Do you, um, do you think the light, Ruth, travels through water? You, you, you exactly. know we've got a diffuse beam. I say we. It's like the royal we. <laughs> because it's very different to a laser. Well, yeah. But the thing is... This, this modality really started life in recognising the benefits or the, 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 um, the better healing effects with a type of laser light called low level laser. So it's not a harmful le level of, of laser. There's different categories of laser and there are the, um, the the group of lasers which is the most harmful coming from surgic, surgical lasers which have now entered into the therapeutic market but this modality started life as low level laser therapy because back in the 60s we didn't have the LED the light emitting diode technology that we've got now mm. um, and as the, the, the technology in LED LEDs has progressed. It's gone from very, very weak, low-level light indicators on machines and that sort of thing to actually being a, making up a significant, um, you know, and a viable um, range of machines to get those tissue healing or pain relieving effects. You know, in, in veterinary and medical um, sectors. So, um, a lot of the research in the more modern LED technology came from NASA in the late 90s. And they, and, you know, they, it was even being used up in the space for astronauts in the space station to help with um, preventing muscle atrophy zero gravity conditions right so you know we've, we've, we've come we are in five decades worth of research it's just that in the last couple of decades I suppose the the light emitting diode technology so it's not laser it's not pinpoint beam light which can pose a risk to eyes even yes. the low level laser can still pose a risk to eyes if it's shot right into your eye but even so a vet care? Not the vet care, no, no because with the vet care devices and the, all our devices um, from Fertizo embrace the light emitting diode technology. Um, so that's spread out light, it's incoherent. So goggles don't, don't need to be worn by, Which is great, isn't it? by the professionals or the, the animals themselves. No, because that was so funny. When I first started to use this on Molly, this was 2014 for her feet. She had terrible yeah. problems with her feet. I bought her goggles 
So <laughs> Molly was always wearing her goggles to um, have the treatment. It was really funny. I didn't wear any goggles, but You're I was very lucky. She she accepted them. Actually. Oh, Molly was just so incredible. She'd let me do anything, you know. But it yeah. was just quite funny because I sent you some pictures, didn't I? <laughs> Molly's in her goggles. But yeah, so I think that's something that people get confused about, isn't it? Really? Yeah. yeah. So there is this, you know. Red light can, is delivered by lasers and it's delivered by LED devices. Um, we're getting more and more devices onto the market now. There's panels, there's wearables. The Fatizo is a handheld, small device, rechargeable, very portable. It's used out in forests by um, sled dog communities. Yeah, search and, and rescue and dogs. Search and rescue and you know, it's, it's incredibly robust. You know, nobody wants to lug about a great big professional laser, you know, because it's, well, it's just not, it's just not I mean, practical. You know, look, horses, they spend most of their lives, you know, in a field. So sure, again, sure. you know, you need electricity power for, you know, a lot. Yeah. So that's, the vet care is so easy and, and easy to take away with you for a weekend because yeah. you never know what could happen. It charges up in a vehicle as well, the 12, 12 volt system. And um, yeah, it's, it, you know, for, for certainly our one of our earliest ambassadors, um, a sled dog racing team, you know, they're, they're out in um, great big forests yeah. over a course of a weekend, you know, just by the nature of what sled dogs do. They, they're vulnerable to injury, heel cuts and that sort of thing. And they, they can even injure themselves just messing about, you know. And so they, they've embraced this technology in such an amazing way in the agility world yeah. and the flyball world, canny crosses and you know the, yeah. the, that sort of sport. Um, and they're, they're, they're getting clued up to the fact that it's not just the dogs that benefit, it's the, the, the people that yeah. compete with their dogs as well. Well exactly, yeah, I mean totally, I mean agility you can take it out of you, you know, yourself, you know, get slip kneecaps or you might slip over and, you know, so yeah, I mean, uh, I love it. Um, but it's not only musculoskeletal, is it, though? It's wounds, and that's where certainly it's helped me very, very much with Prudence and her huge scar, you know, because it was a big scar all over her vital organs. So, it, it, you know, the, gosh, the healing potential of the vet care for wounds is amazing, that's isn't phenomenal. it? It's phenomenal, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and working in the same way, basically reducing inflammation, promoting blood yeah, flow. And yeah, you can use it throughout all the stages of healing. So from that early inflammation stage and the remodeling stage um, and, and beyond, because it, as we said right the word go, it, it regulates everything. So it, one of the studied effects is how it regulates the you know, formation of collagen fibres and everything. And so, uh, we, I mean, animals and us, we heal with, with scar tissue, unless you're lucky enough to get stem cell <laughs> treatment. But we, we essentially heal with scar tissue. And what you're trying to do is, or what physiotherapists try to do is help body to mimic what that tissue was originally and and help with the mobilization of that new scar tissue formation and help prevent overproduction of scar tissue and that's one of the things integrating red light therapy at an early stage it helps that overproduction of scar tissue which can you know if, it, if it's already formed it can be restrictive and cause problems um, so even if you have, if there is overproduction and you know physios are dealing with scar tissue, they can very easily integrate this, um, you know, this Fertizo device with hands-on therapy to remobilize and and just help, you know keep it as flexible as possible. Mm, absolutely. Um, yeah. you no, know, for massage it does let you work deeper. Yeah, uh, yeah, and you get better range of move, movement in the in the limbs. Um, so 
in some cases the, the animals will be recommended to go for hydrotherapy, for example, and we know that it helps to warm up all the muscles and everything, especially in animals that are, have stiffness already or arthritic. Um, so it can be part of that warm-up process before they go, they go into the hydrotherapy pool and it allows them to get more out of the hydrotherapy yeah, yeah. in itself. Oh, you've hit on a really good point there because, I mean, look, the, the vet care was made in South Africa, wasn't it, way back, um, with the help of several physiotherapists that wanted a device could really help not only in their sessions but help get the best results because it's designed for home use because we all know going to a physiotherapist once every week or whatever is going to be limited in its effects. Yeah, yeah it's uh, not going to cut the mustard. Most of the studies, to be honest, if you really look into the detail of the methods that they've used is that the subjects have been um, treated with uh, the whatever piece of equipment is being used in the study at least three times a week or more so this you know unfortunately with the professional machines you know they, they are brilliant because they they've got settings on them so that they can be programmed to the most optimal um, treatment setting for that particular scenario because it's obviously a, a versatile therapy that can be used for many different issues but um, you know you can't get especially for the animals you you know it's just not practical to expect somebody to take their animal back to a, a practice that has a professional laser is often enough well, it's often enough because it should be used well no let alone the expense I mean well, exactly. you know and the animals uh, suffer from white coat syndrome just as much yeah, as we do yeah and so, you've got the journey there and yeah. the journey back and depending how where you yeah. are and all the rest of it so so, so in a way the introduction or the, the concept of the Fertisa vet care as a, an early pioneering device is just about bringing common sense into the scenario, making it affordable, making it accessible to the, own, the animal owners themselves to be part of a recovery process. Well, what about using it preventatively, Ruth? I know, I'm sure lots of people are listening. I mean, well, I know one of my friends is listening who um, has just adopted a little mini Daxi, and she's her first dog, and um, she also has two Siamese cats that can also, of course, benefit from cats benefit from the vet care um, but um, you know and I'm saying you must 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 watch her back she's a rescue you know sweet thing for Barbara and um, you know so working preventatively you know is something I'm in you know my advice yeah. to people I'm key on you know because if you can stop issues happening by combining the best diet, the best exercise, you know, you know, avoiding a body burden, keeping environmental stressors that involves slippy floors to an absolute minimum, you know, you have a much better chance of maintaining optimum health. Yeah, yeah, it's all that, it's all that. I mean, and this is part of that integrative approach, in all honesty. Yeah, you yeah. Know. Um, you know, red light therapy can be great as a standalone in acute circumstances when you know things have gone wrong but yeah it's all that it's it's part of the that that awareness and of um prevent you know prevention environmentally and and having access to a, a, a may i say it, a drug-free or a holistic alternative um to tackle any early kind of inflammatory things that yeah, are happening. Yeah, no, totally. Um, and, and to maintain, you know, flexibility and, you know, just, just, be, just be on it, just be sensible, just, you know, yeah. have a bit of common sense. You don't, I mean, in the world of post-biomodulation, the message really from, from the, the big names in education is, it is prevent. It is a preventative therapy. So, 
I don't know if any of your listeners are familiar with the, the biohacking um, movement that's come from the States, but the use of red light therapy is, is a big biohack. So, What do you mean by biohack? Biohack, it's about helping the body to, to a better quality of life and, and, and allowing longevity, but in good, in the best health possible. Yeah. And yeah, the red light therapy bathing Yes. In the form of panels. Yes. Um, which obviously you can't do with a handheld no. device so much with Fatiso. But if you use it on stress points, mm. you know, or on areas where you're, you're getting regular um, issues, and hopefully most owners will know if they've got tight, if their dogs are suffering from particular tight spots or. Yeah, some confirmation issues or yeah. whatever, or hamstrings, just by the nature of what they do. And the, the trouble with our dogs is that, you know, they, they, they can go off like an absolute fruit loop and suffer for it afterwards. I know that one. Yeah, yeah so, I quite like that expression, fruit loop. <laughs> that's because that's both Prudence's nicknames. The <laughs> one nickname is Fruit Nut and yeah. the other nickname... Zoomies, it's yeah, mad zoomy time. Exactly, you know, of course, and that's why cruciate ligaments, you know, a real common injury in, in lots of young dogs, and slipping kneecaps and the like, and, you know, just going back to Daxies there, you know, and prevention, you know, to keep that spine good, you know, because every dog or a lot of breeds have their weak points, so Daxies, of course, it's their back, you know, Labradors, it's their hips. Um, you know, so it's about recognizing all of those yeah. differences as well. But, but you know, on, on moving on just quickly to a more human level, you know, and how maybe by initially, like I did, investing in the vet care, you learn about how red light can help humans on the same levels with your dodgy knees and you might have a dodgy elbow <laughs> or tight neck, but also with dementia. Yeah, dementia and Parkinson's. So um, there's ongoing research projects. Because that's a huge the issue. World, yeah. Um, that is currently showing very promising results. Applying, or the patients having regular, um, regular access. The TP has got quite popular, hasn't it, it has Ruth? Got quite actually, busy. people so, are coming in with their um, their lunch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Make me quite hungry, actually. I do love it. No, I know. It's so going yeah. back to dementia. Yeah, so, so, yeah. It, I mean, what's what's being said about the, um, the the application of particular types of, of red light therapy? So you know, that can be applied on the head or even on the gut. Mm, that's so some interesting. Of the, the research that I understand is, so, you know, because the, um, there's so much um, synergy really synergy between the gut, between the gut and the brain. But yeah, and certainly in the Parkinson studies, what it's showing is that you know we're not saying by any means that it's that the, that the application or regular application of red light therapy can be a, a cure for Parkinson's. But what it does seem to be doing is actually being able to give the patients back quality of life. They're getting back cognitive ability and um, it is being recognised as, as a potential solution for traumatic brain injury. Well, funnily enough, I heard a rugby player on Radio 4 oh, ages ago now. I can't remember his name. I'm not into sport, awfully. Um, and I know the journalist was saying, uh, um, you know, in between holding red light on his yeah. head because yeah. he'd suffered, it was, you know, diagnosed with dementia yeah. from a, a rugby incident um, and I you know I smiled to myself thinking yep yep that's good yeah, yeah. well I, I personally have a, a, a friend I think it, 10 years ago he was involved in a hit and run accident mm. and um, he suffered a, a very severe brain injury he was in a coma and I think the doctors gave him about 50-50 chance and he was flown over to, back to the UK um, in air ambulance. But he comprehensively used 
one of our uh, earlier fatizos on his head and his completely smashed up leg which was pinned from top to bottom. Oh no. And um, yeah, and I tell you what, I mean the initial scarring that or the you know, the the, the um, compression in his head from the accident um, was pretty severe but now you can't even see it and for those early weeks he used red light therapy comprehensively and um, yeah it's, it's just I, I, th I think that you know physiologically we've, we've got some good dose guidelines um, for what works in healing tissue and for pain relief but we're only scratching the surface of what this, this yes. amazing therapy can do yes. in all honesty and maybe and, just tuning back to when we were like running around in loincloths um, we, I've been to the Sun Temple in India, which is um, a World Heritage Site, yeah. an extraordinary building built out of sand. I mean, unbelievable how they did it. Um, you know, everyone's worshipped the sun, and now we're being taught to be afraid of the sun, and I understand, you know, there's reasons for that, the ozone layer is gone, but, um, you know, we need to just get in tune with nature and the benefits, perhaps, of more... Um, natural healing. Yeah, well, I think some of the fear mongering about being out in the sunshine is, you know, it's been um, exaggerated a little bit. I mean, obviously, go out in the sun with, you know, and don't overdo it. But the, you know, being out in, in light, getting sunlight is just so important. And in terms of, of, of light in general, think of light as a nutrient that we need in our bodies. We are like plants, you know, we photosynthesize, even the synthesize, uh, to synthesize vitamin D, we need sunshine. Yeah, That's yeah. the best way for us to get our vitamin D. Yeah, and, um, totally. Um, you know, that, that only, the sunshine hits the skin, very superficially and we've got cholesterol like substance and, and surface of our skin that, that helps with that synthesization so the idea that light can't penetrate the body deep enough to heal deeper within the body it just it's just such a bizarre way of thinking to me you know i'm i'm now involved with a, an amazing organization called the International Light Association and they have been going since 2003. I'm, I'm quite a newcomer into that family. And you've written a whole chapter in the latest... Yeah, in the latest volume two of their book called The Power of Light. Um, so although it's the International Light Association, but we're sowing... It's a group that is sowing the seeds of healing using light, colour and sound because the, you know, we exist in this amazing electromagnetic spectrum which yeah. is all frequencies. Yeah. We, are, we are electromagnetic frequency beings, beings ourselves, you yeah. know, so we are receptive to all those frequencies. Not all the frequencies are beneficial, there are certainly some harmful frequencies that we know um, but let's start using those beneficial frequencies yes you know and it's so important that we are get the right sort of we get enough light we get the right sort of light we we'll look at sad at syndrome right time yeah. as well you yeah. know for our circadian rhythm our sleep wake cycle and just going back to the animals the thing is, with animals, there's no placebo effect. What you see is what you get. And Without doubt. They don't lie. What I love about maybe the idea of using a device like the Fatizo compared to, say, and maybe some pa panel lights as a, compared to 
a, a clinical veterinary situation where you know they've got it they're, they're being taken into a, a treatment scenario you know for a, a an actual treatment session and that's kind of forced onto them um, I think a lot of the animal therapists that I've worked with over the last decade or so is, is they're very tuned into um, force-free therapy. They have to get the trust of that animal to be able to help that animal. And having just a handheld device which you can, um, you kind of do have to ask their permission to be, be honest. No, you know, I agree. I and, and, you know, they can move away. That's the thing. You know, when they've had enough, they know they've had enough. Exactly. Um, so, no, I know. Yeah. I mean, you know, curing Molly's feet inspired me way back to Ask Sherry Scott, who looks amazing for her age. I mean, when I, I kind of worked out, because her daughter's older than me, I worked out <laughs> roughly. <laughs> I was like, it's impossible. Um, so I said one day, look, Sherry, you know, um, might I be able to use this on my face? And so Sherry, in her style, said, oh, it won't do any harm. And um, then, you know, roll on four years, maybe a bit longer. You know, the beauty market now is flooded with yeah. LED red light yeah. therapy. And again, you know, not all of them are the same, you yeah. know, so I yeah. urge people, because we've, we, well, we've, well, well, I'm going to say we the whole time. You, Fotizo, um, have a beauty product as well in the human range. Yeah, yes, we do. Yeah, it, it's, just, it's just got a different form of C mark, really, for beauty application. But essentially, across all the, the, the models that we have, the, the effects are pretty much the same. We've got just different levels of dose, depending on what the, the specific application yeah. often is, is for. So you don't need such a strong dose when you're using it on a superficial level for anti-aging or depends. skin It or depends skin on your age, I think, I think it depends. Like maybe if you're in your oh. 20s, otherwise I think you need a superstar. <laughs> no, I'm joking, it's a joke. Yeah, but having said that, you know, you've got, you've got the teenagers and the, in, even the, the younger uh, people that have still got hormonal issues going on or, or battling acne spots and, you know, blemishes and that sort of thing. No, you know? no, it's... So, it, you know. No, all of all, oh, Ruth, thank you. Look, I think the TP's getting a bit crowded now. <laughs> I love this, it's great. Um, it's fascinating. It's all like, I mean, where can people get the book? Because this, I've read certainly your chapter, it looks at all sorts of animals from pangolins to bull terriers to tigers. And we've been very blessed to work with so many animal therapists over the last 10 years, and a couple of weeks ago, I was um, at the AZEBN conference, so that's the Association of Veterinary, no, Association of Zoological and Exotic Veterinary Nurse Specialists at West Midland Safari Park. Oh, so wow. Those, uh, th some of those members have also provided some brilliant, um, like the pangolins. Yeah. And, um, you know, they volunteer in some of these um, sanctuaries as well as the physios do. So yeah, we've, we've had a, a massive cross-section of all creatures great and Yeah, small literally, cases. literally. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, it's brilliant. I, you know, I urge people to go on your website, yeah, which so, is... So the, the power of light, colour and sound can be uh, purchased from from us at Fotizo UK, um, the, the business name is Dame Tree Health Products. Oh, all the links are going to be in the show yeah. notes, um, Ruth. Don't worry. But, um, yeah, I've just brought the book into the into the UK um, to offer for anybody who's is very interested in um, the progression, I suppose, of what what's happening in the world of colour, light, and sound, and. You, you know, out of all the membership, I think they're, they're, I have to say, probably looking to me to uh, expand their um, 
that the members knowledge in how light is being used on animals because most of their education is about the use of, of light coloured sound on people but they haven't yet really gone into the, the realms of how it's being used on the animals so this is this has been a very um, you know we're very privileged to be able to introduce all the work from 10 years Definitely. into the, into the in International Light Association. No, it's brilliant, Ruth. I mean, it's, it's definitely interesting. I'm saying to everyone, you know, um, I, I've benefited from this. I know my animals have benefited from it, this. And I think, you know, for me, it's my go-to solution. It's an investment. And it lasts for so long. I mean, I'm, whatever, nearly 10 years, I've only had three devices, I think, yeah, and yeah. I use them a lot. So, you know. Um, yeah, that's what the great thing about it. LED technology is really robust. It lasts oh, so many years and years and years. The only we're just going to go, the we're just going to wear out. out. I'm just going to, you're only going to be. So I'm now doing a program, pre-programmed dose the of 31 the seconds. 31 seconds. And then it switches off when it's yeah. finished the dose. Now, mentioning the beep, yes, the standard model comes with a, a it makes a couple of beeps when it starts and yeah. then a couple of beeps when it stops. Yeah. But uh, we have managed to persuade the manufacturers to produce a silent version. Which is brilliant for nervous dogs and sound sensitive yeah. dogs and your cats, yeah. they go, you heard that? Yeah. And then we switch it on again. Yeah. So you don't have to worry with this that oh, you know, you haven't got the dose right or you don't know how long because it does it for you. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I don't know if people can hear that because we're battling against a, we are, a gong it, bath behind us. <laughs> Mike's shaking his head. You can't hear it. I've got it so near the microphone. Oh, yes, a gong bath is taking over. Yeah. I think, <laughs> Ruth, we might have to <laughs> terminate here. <laughs> It's certainly an interesting venue to try and do a podcast. <laughs> it's great. It's just the first yeah. of many more. Yeah. And um, thank you so much. I really think well. this has been an informative episode for everyone to really learn about, you know, what yeah. my favourite product. It's a lot, been a long time coming. We've been trying to arrange this for a little while. Exactly. Yeah, and it's yeah, just yeah. always better to do it in real life. Yeah, brilliant. Thank, thank you, Ruth. Thanks, Anna. That's our show, Mr. Binks. What did you think? Yes, it is a very good explanation of how the vet care can help on so many levels. And you know, don't you? Yes, Mr. Binks, you're right. It is time for Woof of the Week. <coughs> Never underestimate the power of natural healing and indeed the power of red light. <coughs> Well, I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, go and rate and review the show wherever you tune into your podcasts. Thanks again to Ruth Milner for joining us today. And yes, you got it. All the links are in the show notes. Thanks, of course, to Mike Hansen, my producer, for all the music and production as ever. What's that, Mr. Binks? You're right. We will be back in your feed next Sunday. So why don't you subscribe now? It's free. Free. And that way, you'll never miss another show. Bye for now. Bye.